Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to service this specialised epic mountain bike. When we actually filmed this, I always do this voiceover after it's edited and my actual reaction to this bike was wow when I realised the difference between the before and afters. So I'm going to talk you through one of our services and when I service a bike I do like to sort of present them clean and so with this one the tyres were a bit grimy so I gave them a wash down and there's a good reason to wash your tyres down which you'll see in a moment. I often pre-spot punctures now I noticed on here as I was scrubbing down we've got a lump there a little, little lump and when I pulled it out it was actually a thorn and look at that so that's this rider's next puncture which actually is already punctured so this would have been a slow puncture as it stood at the moment this tire would have gone down over two or three days but when he was out riding next time if that little thorn had got a little hooked out came out of the tire this tire would have deflated very very quickly and in fact you'll see a little bit further on how it has already deflated and we replaced the inner tube so we saved him a, a walk home there now we just checked the chain it's a 0.75 percent stretch it's not fully stretched out to where the cassette has worn out but the chain has so we're going to replace that chain we're also going to give this bike a nice clean up along the way it's a good way of us you know like with washing the tires down where i spotted that puncture i can often spot things just by having a little bit of a tactile clean of a bike, spotting things all the way along. So I also noticed here as I was stripping down the bike, the rear derailleur cable is actually a little long. It's a little bit kinked. Where it runs in the frame just above that S there, there's just a little bit of a kink on that cable there. So I'm gonna actually, I mean, there was actually, this cable was flowing very, very nicely. So there's no need to replace it, but I am gonna shorten the outer on this one just to get that line, that smooth curve, which will help with his gear changing anyway. And I strip the bike down, you know, everything comes off and I just sort of weigh up parts, give them a little clean up, check brake pads and wear and fill bearings. So with this chain set off, I can fill the bottom bracket bearing. And when I put the chain set back on, I can give it a spin test so I can check bearings and things along the way. Most modern bikes have sealed bearings. There's no need to ever really take the seals off and clean them up because normally they, they're pretty much sealed for life. So I can feel when a bearing is dry. I can feel when it's worn. I can advise my customers accordingly and they can either agree to have bearings done or just to leave them for the you know the time till they are life extinct so you know all the way through a service i'm feeling checking a bike seeing what needs doing advising customers maybe doing a little bit of extra work sometimes i even price for a job that when i get involved with it it's not as involved and doesn't need doing anyway so price can fluctuate a little bit but i always along the process of servicing a bike and sending customers texts and you know talking with them and you build up a rapport with your customer they begin to understand your thought processes and ethoses and are usually quite happy with what i say to them so we're just washing down the chain set now everything has now been through that i want to put through the old sonic cleaner everything now has been through the old sonic cleaner so that would be things like the cassette and the jockey wheels and the derailleurs and so on and then i wash them down and then begin the re-lubricating process so at the moment we're just doing the jockey wheels here we're using a premium grease. We're using Loctites to hold the pinch bolts there on the derailleur axles of the jockey wheels. I'm lubricating the pivot points on the derailleurs. Those, although they never really, you know, from factory, they're not really supposed to be lubricated. They do wear, so that, you know, a bit of lubrication helps those. Things like the through axles there, I grease those because they are very, very prone to sticking inside of the wheel hub itself. And I've had to extract several wheel axles over the time. That can often be a real problem, so I always lubricate those. And then we're just giving the pads a clean up. The pads themselves have plenty of life in them. You can see the top ones there have been cleaned up. The bottom ones are still a little bit impregnated and dirty. You can see what the difference we can make just to the pads by a clean up. And now one thing which I had noticed with this bike when it came in was this front brake pipe was so long. It stuck out so far from the forks that you catch a, a branch or, or a twig or something out when you're out. On the trails or out on the mountains and that's just going to rip you straight off your bike if that gets caught and in fact it has actually been caught at some point because you can see here there's a kink in the pipe where that has actually taken a tug at some point and has bent and kinked that pipe so i'm going to shorten this brake pipe i think i shortened it about five inches in the end and you can see that that little crease there so i cut a piece off and that actually brought it a smoother arc from the brake caliper itself but also it brought it in line with the rear brake and the rear derailleur cable. It brought them in line with those pipes and cables. Made the bike just aesthetically look way, way more pleasing. And also 
reduces that risk of that pipe getting hooked when they're out riding and causing an accident. So obviously now we've we've cut that pipe, we just need to bleed the brake through just to make sure there's no air in there. So that's just what I'm doing here at the moment, just bleed the brake through, make sure there's no bubbles in there. Now when I do remove these, I do just use a little bit of brake cleaner, just a little squirt there and a little white brown just to make sure there's no oil left on there because obviously if that runs down and touches the pads, it's going to impregnate those and, and they're going to become contaminated. You can see there now that's everything's in line. It's a much smoother arc. And yeah, I mean, look, there's a, a kink there and that's how much I shortened it by. So it was a worthy job really. And now that I hadn't quoted the customer for, and in fact, because he was having the video done, I didn't charge him for that. But that's the sort of thing I'm always looking for when I'm servicing a bike. It's just those minor detail improvements that will make the world a difference to a bike. You know, that was obviously done in the factory too long. And this bike would have stayed like that its entire life had it not have maybe had one of our services. So it's just nice to tidy those little things up as we go along. So now I'm just washing down the frame. Again, it's a good point for me to get tactile with the bike, check little things like derailleur hangers loose and little clips and things that are not quite right. The forks on these had a clip holding that pipe that I'd shortened. And I guess where that had that tuck, that clip wasn't actually square. It has like a recess and it popped out of that recess. So that was something that I also sorted out along the way. You'll see that right towards the end where I just tighten that up. Now, obviously I've done the frame, I've done all the components. It's a good time now just to give those discs a little rub down, rub down both sides. It just takes out those little lines that accumulate in a disc that started to squeal and make a noise. And then when I'm doing the hub, I actually always spray this with a brake cleaner rather than a degreaser because degreaser is very wet and it needs washing down. Brake cleaner itself actually evaporates quite quickly so it doesn't impregnate the bearings and get inside that hub so that's why I use brake cleaner on for cleaning off hubs. You can see there that tire has gone down, that was from that thorn that I took out but I'm just washing the wheel down, checking all the spokes, feeling everything, feeling the wheel bearings before I begin to put the wheel back together which is what I'm just doing here. So back goes on the cassette, we torque that up, we've obviously checked everything on the wheel so I'm quite happy now that what I've done to the wheel is good and proper so we're just going to replace that inner tube now from that puncture from that thorn that he had in that wheel when he brought it in that he wouldn't have even known about so in goes a new inner tube tire back on with this one the logos already lined up on the tires we've mentioned in other videos about lining up logos and that's what we did here and then give it an inflation so if you're new to the channel do subscribe to us and do drop a comment we're really enjoying the comments you know we, we get a lot of interaction with people now we haven't people popping in the shop now and chatting to us about the YouTube which is really nice and the interaction on, on the channel itself is one of the most rewarding parts of having a YouTube channel so do drop a comment do like do subscribe do hit the notification bell do all those things that you, you you know can help us out so you can see now that I'm beginning to put this bike back together now and I'm just going to address this slightly too long rear derailleur cable it just needs a couple of inches off there as you can see that'll just make that arc a little bit smoother and the gear changing a little bit less taut you know it would just make it a little bit smoother for the gear change so we just nip off that outer nothing wrong with the inner cable so we slid that out at the brake end that was what I was just doing there and we reset everything up new cable end obviously and then everything goes back on and we'll get the chain on and then we'll adjust all the, the gears as you know it's when I'm putting things on here I'm only just pretty much pinch tightening everything up because we put everything back on we adjust everything we index the gears as, as I'm doing now we just the indexer on this is actually on the shifter which is why you couldn't see me doing it there things like this brake the front brake is binding so i'll adjust these sort of things as i put a bike back together and then at the point where i'm happy that the bike's changing gear correctly the brakes are working correctly all the various things that we've we've dealt with along the way are all correct and as they should be front brakes working where i've bled it and everything else then i will go through the bike with a torque wrench and get everything spot on for the actual torque settings and tightness and everything the front forks actually were very very low on pressure which is what i was just doing there we reinflated the forks to sort of the mid-range of the the specifications that were actually printed on the forks in this case so they were a little low and we reinflated those and as you can see now i'm just going through the bike with a torque wrench just making sure everything's right then nothing's going to come loose when he's out and about we now know that the brake is not going to get caught the rear derailleur is going to be changing gear nicely everything's tight the brakes aren't going to be squealing this is now going to be a very very nice bike to ride with everything just so we never ever talk up the the fittings on the bike the accessory fittings 
We always do those by hand because then you don't strip out any threads on those fittings. So what a difference. Look at these before and afters. What an amazing job. I was really thrilled and pleased with this bike. So thanks for watching. Do subscribe and we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.